4. DSV Limiting Factor In 2014, an eccentric millionaire explorer and retired naval officer decided he wanted to dive to the world's most extreme depths. His name is Victor Vescovo, and he approached Triton submarines and asked for help designing a submersible that would enable him to reach his goal. No such vehicle existed, yet Vescovo already had his sights set on visiting the Five Deeps the deepest point in each of the five oceans. It was a big task. The deeper a submarine goes, the higher the water pressure becomes, forcing the vehicle to put up a constant fight against the water surrounding it. Where Viscova wanted to go, the pressure is so high that a standard submersible would be crushed like a soda can. To give you an idea, the average atmospheric pressure in a home or office setting is 14.7 pounds per square inch. At the bottom of the 36,000-foot Deep Challenger Deep Trench, which was at the top of Vescovo's destination list, the pressure is 16,000 pounds per square inch. Building something strong enough to withstand it would be just one of numerous challenges that come with traveling that far below the water's surface. It's certainly possible to build a submersible that can handle these conditions, but until then, any vehicle that had traveled as far down as Vescovo wanted to go only proved good for a one-time use. The objective in this case was to design a submersible that could be used more than once, and which was capable of withstanding the conditions of the extreme deep repeatedly. Despite the challenges they faced, the experts at Triton Submarines agreed to design a vehicle that would hopefully fulfill Vescovo's vision. One of the first things they did was test the steel they planned to use to make sure it could withstand the pressures it would encounter tens of thousands of feet down. There's only one place in the world where this type of testing is even available, which speaks to the ambitious nature of the project. The final product was a $37 million submersible called the DSV Limiting Factor. Equipped with a Grade 5 titanium hull, it looks nothing like a traditional submarine, and it's been described as being scallop-shaped, wedged, and like an axe head. The purpose of its shape is to enable it to descend to extreme depths as quickly as possible. In the case of the Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench, the deepest point in all the oceans at around 36,000 feet, the descent takes about four hours. The limiting factor can fit two people, but the amount of space in the cabin could perhaps be best described as a claustrophobic's worst nightmare. Each seat has a window for viewing, and there's a window on the floor as well. The vehicle is capable of supplying oxygen to its crew for 16 hours and has an emergency backup system in case something goes wrong. In 2019, Vescovo finally descended into the Challenger Deep and set a new world record for the deepest point ever reached by a manned submersible. He defeated the previous record, which was set in 1960, by 52 feet. He also achieved a new first by exploring the bottom of the Marianas Trench for four hours, staying there longer than anyone before him. In addition to visiting the Challenger Deep, he completed his five deeps expedition and successfully descended to the lowest point in every ocean. During the dives, Vescovo and his crew have discovered at least 40 previously unknown species. They also encountered the troubling sight of garbage, proving that not even the remotest corners of the planet is truly left untouched by human activity. If you had a chance to visit the Marianas Trench in a submarine, would you do it? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 3. The U.S. Navy's New Submarines In early 2021, the U.S. Navy launched its most advanced fast attack submarine yet, the Virginia-class USS Montana. Measuring 377 feet long with a 34-foot beam, the vessel is capable of diving to 800 feet and is manned by a crew of 136 sailors. Naturally, it's equipped with the latest sonar, mine detection, and surveillance and reconnaissance technology. It also has a lockout trunk, which enables Navy SEALs and other personnel to exit the submarine without requiring it to surface. The Montana itself is less detectable than the Navy's previous submarines, and it's capable of attacking targets both in the water and on shore with its missiles. At the ship's christening in late 2020, Former Navy Undersecretary Gregory J. Slavonic 
described the Montana as elevating the American military's anti-submarine and anti-ship power. It's equipped with a fly-by wire system that can automatically set the vessel's speed and depth while accounting for its surroundings. This frees up captains from certain tasks so they can devote more of their attention to other things. In other words, these AI capabilities reduce the number of tasks that require human operation. The Montana's operational system can even provide the crew with incoming threat scenario data and recommend responses based on past actions. Understandably, there are limits on the amount of information the military is willing to share with the public about what its technology is capable of. Writing for National Interest, Chris Osborne explained that some submarine developers have described the Virginia-class fleet that the Montana belongs to as having advanced quieting technologies, further reducing the likelihood of detection. The development of these newer subs came as the Navy was retiring its older submarines at an increasing pace. At the same time, concerns over China's submarine development served as just another reason for the Navy to update its fleet. In fact, the military's already working on an even newer class of state-of-the-art submarines that will replace the current Ohio class of armed nuclear submarines. Dubbed the Columbia class, plans call for 12 ships. Construction on the first Columbia class vessel, the USS District of Columbia, began in late 2020, but the Navy doesn't expect it to enter service until 2031. At 560 feet long, the Columbia-class subs will be the same length as the Ohio-class submarines, and they'll be slightly wider with a 43-foot diameter. With an estimated price tag of $6.1 billion just to design and build the District of Columbia submarine alone, the military plans to use technology from the Ohio and Virginia-class fleets when and where possible. Ideally, it'll have a service life of 42 years. Its nuclear fuel core should last about that long. And like any attack submarine, it'll be fitted with missile tubes galore and capable of firing highly deadly weapons that hopefully never get used. 2. Unmanned Submarine Hunter As submarines continue to get quieter and less detectable, enabling them to come closer to the shore than ever before without being noticed, it's become a top priority among some countries to counter this technology. In the US, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, launched the Anti-Submarine Warfare Continuous Trail Unmanned Vessel ACTUV, program. Its vision is to develop an autonomous aquatic drone, known as the Sea Hunter, that can traverse thousands of miles of open ocean for months at a time, without a single crew member aboard. Ideally, the Sea Hunter will search for enemy submarines using sonar, radar, and other systems, while navigating through narrow channels and shipping traffic unnoticed. It will also be equipped with state-of-the-art technology when it comes to capturing images and videos of its surroundings. Open water testing of the project began in 2016. Two years later, DARPA announced the program's successful completion and handed the vehicle over to the Office of Naval Research for further development. The 132-foot-long, 40-meter Sea Hunter has met or exceeded all of its testing expectations so far. It's checked all the necessary boxes for speed, maneuverability, stability, acceleration and deceleration, fuel consumption, and mechanical reliability while out at sea. A lot more testing is required to make sure that its sensors are in good working order, that it meets maritime compliance standards, and that it's truly appropriate for the types of mission the U.S. Navy wants to carry out and be prepared for in the future. Above all, the Sea Hunter will have to prove that it's capable of detecting submarines and mines. In August of 2022, the Sea Hunter and two other unmanned prototype vessels participated in the world's largest international maritime warfare exercise, known as the Rim of the Pacific, or Rim Pack Exercise. Its use in the exercise indicates that its development is still being taken seriously, and that perhaps it's expected to play a real role in military operations at some point. The Sea Hunter and the other prototype vessels were used during all three phases of the event, which hosts participants from 27 countries. In a statement, Commander Jerry Daly said that part of the challenge with the unmanned machines is figuring out how to integrate them with a manned force. In 2020, the media delivered the alarming but not very surprising news that China has already started working on its own version of an uncrewed submarine hunter. 
Photos that appeared on the Chinese social media platform Weibo showed a massive vessel that appeared to be larger than the Sea Hunter which would make it the world's largest uncrewed surface vessel. In the meantime, the U.S. Navy is reportedly experimenting with several other unmanned vessels. While speaking at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in October of 2022, U.S. 5th Fleet Commander Vice Admiral Brad Cooper said that the Navy hopes to have a fleet of 100 unmanned marine vehicles patrolling the Red Sea by late 2023. The Navy's vision includes hybrid vehicles that are unmanned but can be controlled by an operator from another vessel, especially when it comes to the decision to deploy weapons or react to an emergency. 1. Russia's New Submarines The Cold War may have ended in the early 1990s, but the competition between Russia and the U.S. for military superiority remains strong. Consequently, both countries have developed some of the world's most formidable machines and weapons. But the Russian Navy has some catching up to do with the U.S. when it comes to their woefully outdated Soviet-era submarine fleet. Plans are currently underway to replace the aging vessels with a collection of newly built nuclear submarines, which will be a part of the country's nuclear deterrent force. Some of these plans have been in the works since before the Soviet Union fell. One good example is the Bore class of submarines. Design work started in the 1980s, but construction on the first ship didn't get underway until 1996. Slowly but surely, however, Russia has started to show signs of a modernizing military, and it's very clearly a priority among the country's top officials. In addition to the Bore class subs, the nuclear deterrent force consists of four newly developed Khabarovsk-class submarines. Each Khabarovsk sub will reportedly carry six nuclear-powered drone torpedoes that are capable of hitting coastal targets an ocean away. These bombs are capable of inflicting ten times the damage as the bombs the U.S. dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which effectively ended World War II. In 2022, three Russian submarines, each carrying 200 nuclear weapons, were seen surfacing through Arctic ice several meters thick. This was taken as a display of the country's abilities to navigate accurately beneath the ice and to respond quickly to a nuclear attack. It was also a demonstration of Russia's ability to hide from NATO's anti-submarine forces if tensions reach a boiling point and erupt into war. In keeping with its plans to update its aging equipment, the Russian military is also working to modernize its Oscar-class submarines as part of a program known as Project 949AM. Initiated in 2011, the $182 million effort involves putting at least three Oscar-class vessels through extensive maintenance and repairs in hopes of extending their service life by about 20 years. A submarine called the Irkutsk is the first to undergo the modernization scheme. Commissioned in 1988, the 30-plus-year-old vessel will be equipped with the latest missile, torpedo, and communication systems, including a complex new system that will enable it to launch hypersonic missiles. If everything goes according to schedule, the Irkutsk will return to naval service sometime this year. Project 949AM appears to be going smoothly and has been expanded to include as many as seven submarines. The development of Russia's nuclear-powered Oscar-class submarines began during the 1970s. At nearly 509 feet long, they were the world's largest operating cruise missile subs until 2007, when the U.S. Navy modernized some of its Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines. The only other two larger classes of submarines that currently exist are the Soviet Typhoon-class and Russian Bore-class vessels. Oscar-class submarines were designed to attack NATO naval fleets and served in both the Northern and Pacific fleets as replacements for older vessels. Even as the Soviet Union faced mounting financial problems in the years leading up to its collapse, developing nuclear submarine technology remained a top priority, which is good news for Russia but not exactly great news for countries who are at odds with Russia. Thanks for watching. Which underwater technology impressed you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.